Hello, good morning. So I am going to go over a trial today on using homeopathy in mastitis, cow mastitis, bovine mastitis. It's a study I thought I'd look at today because it's an interesting one, but it's the kind of one that I think gets a lot of homeopaths really excited. And I don't think we should be that excited. <laughs> I'll show you why. So study is impact of a novel homeopathic complex <coughs> problem one on uh, the management of multiple antibiotic resistant bovine mastitis and open label <coughs> non-randomized <coughs> placebo control trial <laughs> okay so i only have the abstract available because this was published in homeopathy the journal um it says accepted after revision. I don't know if you can see that February 22nd, 2023. So it's pretty recent. Um, but homeopathy, I do not have a uh, subscription to. And you can't get anything but the abstract online unless you have a subscription. So guessing by the author's names, it looks like it's coming out of Brazil. Um, and so let's go into the abstract. So bovine mastitis is characterized by an inflammatory process in the mammary gland, the udders, <laughs> and represents one of the main diseases affecting a dairy herd. It is a big problem for dairy farmers. It reduces yields, so they lose money, and um, they can't use the milk that a, uh, a cow infected with mastitis um, produces. Management of mastitis is most commonly via antibiotics, but the rising incidence of multiple antibiotic resistance means that additional options are needed. Homeopathic products can be administered in dairy farming for a range of clinical reasons and may be preferential due to the absence of residues. So the objective was to assess the potential of a novel homeopathic <laughs> complex medicine in managing bovine mastitis. <laughs> so if it's novel, we don't have a proving. We don't know what it does. So you actually can't prescribe it homeopathically. So this is not homeopathic. <laughs> it's just, it's not. It may be highly diluted. So any results we get from this trial may show us that highly dilute medicines have a biological action um, but nothing will, like nothing this trial has will tell us anything about homeopathy because it's not homeopathy. <sighs> complex, I mean, we already covered. It, you can use a complex medicine if you prove it as a complex medicine because then you know what the complex medicine does. But because it's novel, <laughs> we have no idea what it does. So, yeah, just not homeopathic. Okay, 24 lactating Holstein cows. 24 is not a huge number, so I'm less excited again, um, especially if it's a large dairy herd. Like, you know, herds will often be in the hundreds, so it's interesting that it's only 24. Um, with mastitis, so they already have an infection. We're divided into two groups. The homeopathic complex group received a homeopathic complex daily for 60 days at a dose of 20 grams per day. That seems high. I don't know why you would have to do 20 grams a day. The placebo group received calcium carbonate vehicle without homeopathic medicines at the same dose and repetition. So, calcium carbonate is not biologically inactive, um, especially to a cow that is lactating and has very high calcium needs. So, I'm not entirely sure why they chose calcium carbonate as their placebo. Um, now, this was an open label trial, which means that the authors, whoever here was doing the on the ground stuff, if any of these people were, I think whoever's doing on the ground should have been cited or should have been in the author, but I, I don't know. Um, they knew who was getting placebo and who was getting treatment. Now that may not seem like a big deal, um, but it is potentially an area of bias because they are going to be expecting the treatment group to get better and expecting the placebo group to not get better. Um, and that can impact how you perceive what you see. So next, open label, non-randomized. So the 
Holstein cows, these 24 Holstein cows, were not randomly put into groups. The problem with this is that you could have differences in the groups to begin with. And so whatever changes, like, so we'll go into the results, obviously, next. Any results between the groups, we can't be sure um, are truly differences due to treatment because the groups might have been different to begin with. Now, this could have been addressed in the full text, so I don't know if they do talk about, like, because the way to get around this is they should have done some statistical analysis on the groups to begin with, looking at their baseline values before treatment and making sure there was no statistically significant difference between the groups. So I don't know if they did that or not. If they did, this is less of an issue. But when just reading the abstract, that's a point of caution. So, the calcium carbonate, da, 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 da. the main outcome measure was somatic cell count, SCC, with additional outcome measures including milk production in kilograms per day, milk constituents, percentage of protein, fat, lactose, and total milk solids, serum levels of cortisol, glucose, ammonia, and lactic acid. All outcomes were measured at the beginning of the study and after 30 and 60 days. Milk samples were also collected from all animals at the beginning of the study, confirming a high 0.2, greater than 0.2 MAR index for isolated bacterial cultures. So, main outcome measures, somatic cell count. This is how they measure subclinical mastitis. So, in a cow, you can tell mastitis because the milk looks funny. <laughs> It's all lumpy or discolored or something. Great remedies for that, by the way. Um, or you can see inflammation on the udders. Somatic cell count is how many, um, essentially, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Immune cells are in the milk to begin with. And so um, it's how they measure whether or not mastitis is present when there's no good symptoms. You don't see the, the lumpy milk yet and such and such. They have to do this to make sure that um, they can sell the milk because if, if there's an infection, they cannot sell the milk. Um, additional measures, milk production, milk constituents, percentage of protein, fat, lactose, and milk solids, serum levels of cortisol, glucose, ammonia, and lactic acid. Now, these are all objective measures, which is great because it is an open-label trial, so I'm less worried about potential bias because they can see that because they may be interpreting things differently but with objective measures that's not as much of an issue however it does seem like they're efficient a little bit they are measuring a lot of different stuff and uh this is what people do when they want to make sure they get a good result they'll be <laughs> they'll measure like 20 different things because then likely one of those will end up being statistically significant <laughs> not that it's necessarily a horrible thing i just it makes me giggle a little bit when there's like we measured this and this and this and this and this and this anyway um and it's interesting i'm not sure why they chose to measure the milk constituents and the serum levels of different compounds potentially they were just looking at whether or not the cow was healthier after this you know lower cortisol glucose ammonia etc etc cetera, et cetera. anyway um so samples were also collected from all animals at the beginning of the study, confirming a high microbial uh, multiple antibiotic resistance. So basically they're saying all of these cows showed that um, they had antibiotic resistance. So they've been treated with antibiotics before, so it's good to know about your population. Assessment of uh, somatic cell count showed a statistically significant difference favoring the homeopathic complex versus placebo at group at day 60. 60, not 30, notice. A reduction in serum cortisol levels and an increase in fat, lactose, and total milk solids in animals treated with the homeopathic complex at day 60 were also seen. Other outcome measures did not show statistically significant intergroup differences. The results of this non-randomized, open-label, placebo-controlled trial suggest that the potential for a novel homeopathic complex medicine in management of multiple antibiotic-resistant bovine mastitis, thus offering dairy farmers an additional option to antibiotics and making dairy products safer for consumer health and milk production more sustainable. Now, um, it's interesting to me that it was only at day 60 and not 30. 
I'm not sure why that would be. It would be, I'm curious that they didn't put how statistically significant um, these were. Because um, again, a small study, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so the results were favorable for the, the highly diluted novel complex not for homeopathy, um, but interesting finding nonetheless, and I think we all would agree that homeopathy plays a great role in uh, preventing antibiotic resistance and offering an alternative to antibiotics for an infection. Um, but yeah, it's hard to say what we else we can gather from this study. Excuse me. Um, when it's not homeopathy, they don't even tell us what the novel complex is. Not that we could use it afterwards, because you can't use something homeopathically still if you don't have a proving. Like, because you can't prescribe it based on law of similars. We have nothing similar to prescribe it to. Um, yada, yada, yada. But interesting, positive finding, but we can't really do much with it.